ago and bought a couple of stocks, like American American Tower, AMT, on the, right. on the big board. Right. $10,000 investment today would be worth almost $300,000. The average investor doesn't get that. Right. Origin Clear is the only company in the water space that's exclusively working with individual investors, giving them an opportunity to actually invest before the institutions come out. And welcome everyone to the CEO briefing. I'm actually at a hotel in the lobby shooting, but it, it seems to be working well. If you hear the occasional door opening or whatever, just disregard and suspend all disbelief. All right, so we're gonna get this party started. As you can see from the clip I just played, Ken was with the Kevin Harrington team this, this week, and there'll be more, much more about that. I've got a couple of comments. Timothy, amen, territorial, hey, Riggs. Well, thank you, Timothy, so it's a pleasure. All right, let's jump back in here. And it is indeed Thursday, March 14th, briefing number 253. Of course, the usual safe harbor statement, the regulation D disclaimer, and now we have a regulation A disclaimer as we will be testing the waters. Just to explain what's going on here, we have a regulation A is a, the crowdfunding regulation it allows people to invest up to 10% of their annual income per year dur during the during the offering, which lasts a year typically. And what you were allowed to do before it's fully registered is to test the waters. And that means we can start promoting it, take indications of interest from investors, um, you know, get, get them all teed up. But of course, they have no obligation to invest until the registration is complete, and we will not accept money either, as it says right here. Now, what is the timing of this registration? The, the main factor we're dealing with here is that we have to update our financial filings, and that means the annual report, which is due in April, needs to be filed, and then we'll be able to update our registration statement and then file it and get approval, which takes, you know, 20, 30 days, 40 days, it's hard to say. We've been pretty lucky with regula Regulation A. I think the last one in 2022 was less, gosh, it was uh, 20 days or so. So hopefully it'd be the same, but no guarantees. Anyway, so we are gonna start, you know, getting people to make a non-binding indication of interest. That just brings you up to speed there on what's going on. And let's jump into the week's news. Lots going on here, lots going on in the world. And there really is, it really is time for a investable water asset. So let's, let's just see what's going on here. So this announcement here, we're very excited to be here with uh, Kevin Harrington and Brad and T. Adam. Um, we are here really to energize our branding and our marketing and our position within the competition out in, in the market space. And we really feel that Harrington's group can help us with this. If you're looking for an event to really improve your marketing, your branding, and how you're going to enter your market, and this is the place to come. Is when you level up the people you're with, you're going to level up your experiences and your ability to, to perform. All right. So that's what that that was about check out this trend the red line is total credit card debt as you know during covid people went into a severe savings because i guess they felt it was a dangerous time but credit card debt is back on trend in fact i see it as being uh, more of an acceleration trend since um 2021 when things started recovering the i think the, the slope is a greater one. So that does not imply that they, we have a great economy, but you know, that's kind of what's going on here. All right, let's take a look here at uh, something that was posted. And there was a brewery in the East Bay of San Francisco and the local city was requiring it to truck its waste to another county. We can't take your, your effluent, excuse me, right? And it's not the fault of the utility, they just, completely overstressed, can't take it. This is happening across America. It's a silent disaster, and we're here to solve that. It's a growing movement. There's a unicorn called Grady Ant, which you can't invest in. Again, you can't invest in it, but they are taking the high end. They're taking the Pepsicos of the world, and they're doing a fine job of it. We're the middle ground, 
of which there are many, many more, and we plan to make it like hotcakes. Hotcakes for water treatment. And bank profits are dropping. And the FDIC, I don't know if you heard, but the Fed has discontinued a, a particular credit facility that banks use. So I don't think banks are particularly happy campers right now. All right. So, and here we have delinquency rate of multifamily housing, now the highest since 2013, and it is rising fast. Um, some, some would say that it's a buying opportunity. My, my personal opinion is this is a, well, real estate's great. I'm not going to say real estate's bad, but you got to pick your moment, pick your, your investment, or you'll be making up a lot of a negative growth. But again, this is why we think water is so powerful, because water doesn't do this, right? Primarily because it's been a monopoly, and now it's coming out of that. All right. This, this is a post that talks about the, the it, it discusses the, the book Inside the Tornado. And I'm not going to get into it because I've covered it before, but it's, it describes a high, high-tech life cycle. Um, well worth checking out. What is going on with tech? Outflows are huge. This is on the 8th. Look at those outflows. Largest outflow ever from tech funds. So there's a lot of selling going on by insiders, a lot. And I don't think that's wonderful, but, you know, um, this is a case study where, again, it was in the book Inside a Tornado, which I quoted in this particular uh, podcast about his book by Jeffrey Moore. And the, in the 80s, those of you who recall, there was a newcomer called Oracle. There was an existing company called Ingress. And guess who survived? Oracle. Why? Well, because they were, they had the attitude, a good one, a conservative one, we will not ship anything if it does not work. However, when there's a tornado of adoption and large databases were being adopted rapidly in the late 80s, you just got to get the seats and damn the torpedoes, right? Ingress basically disappeared and Oracle, of course, became a success story that it is. And it's primarily because when, when there's adoption going on, it's mainly a race to get seats. And people who are in you know, the, the, the buyers in a tornado of adoption are less worried about workability than, hey, everybody else is getting it, therefore I'm getting it too. It's, a, it's sort of a momentum thing. So when that happens, you've got to race to get to satisfy demand, which in a tornado of adoption, you will never satisfy all of the demand. Not going to happen. But you can dominate, which is what Oracle did, if you move fast enough. Now, what's the relevance for us? Well, this is why we knew we had to create a spinoff that, that would work its way onto the NASDAQ, because you need a lot of ability to expand through acquisitions, through dramatically increased sales, et cetera. And that requires a capital beyond our ability uh, at, in, in the penny stock space. So we believe that, that a tornado of adoption is beginning in what you might call decentralized water or, as a, as a reporter put it, distributed utilities, micro-utilities, private utilities, meaning treat in place. When an enterprise treats its own water, now the central utility no longer treats it, and it becomes a commercial venture that we call water to service, water on demand. That is lighting up. And I think we're positioned beautifully to be uh, a leader in this space. More about that soon. Job growth. The job changes since about a year ago have been a dramatic increase in part-time jobs and a reduction of full-time jobs. So anybody who's saying that job creation is great, sorry, I don't think growth in part-time jobs is a good thing. The American dream now costs $3.4 million. In other words, if you want to you know, get a wedding, get a home, buy a car, and raise a family, et cetera, it's going to cost you $3.4 million. And this is part of why people, uh, I see, I see kids and I go, wow, the parents, how do parents afford kids? It's becoming terrible. All right. Now this is a very good, how to get rich without getting lucky. I'll, I'll cover it briefly here. I don't want to get into it too deeply, but basically, wealth money status. Okay, 
Wealth, not money or status. Wealth is having assets that earn while you sleep. Money is how we transfer time and wealth. Status is your place in the social hierarchy. Understand that ethical wealth creation is possible. If you secretly despise wealth, it will elude you, ignore people playing status games. They gain status by attacking people playing wealth creation games. Okay, equity, that's in other words, get a piece of a business to gain your financial freedom. Uh, your tactics um, are done from uh, your partners, a, a bunch of important stuff here. Get specific knowledge. I've often said that know the space you're in. Accountability, of course, take risks under your own name. Leverage, and that business leverage comes from capital, people, and products with no marginal cost of replication, i.e. code and media. In other words, and this is really why we, we moved into water on demand because the water equipment business is actually low margin. And because it's hardware, it moves slowly, it takes a couple of years to make the sale, that burns up staff time, et cetera. But the financing of these systems with this concept of water as a service, that is what um, he, this, uh, this writer calls products with no marginal cost of replication, meaning that once you get the machine going, you don't have a marginal cost of replication. Capital means money. To raise money, apply your specific knowledge with accountability, et cetera, et cetera. Labor means people working for you. I'm not going to go too deep into this, but this is well worth looking at. It's on my X skills. This is an important one, investing in you. You should be too busy to, quote, unquote, do coffee while still keeping an uncluttered cal calendar, set and enforce an aspirational personal hourly rate. If fixing a problem will save less than your hourly rate, ignore it. Okay, in parting words, no rich, get, get rich quick schemes. We know that. Those of you who are watching this understand all this very well. So March 9th in my rig sec, I strongly recommend reading it further. Okay, now it turns out that we are, we're getting Taiwan to invest in the US. Well, guess what? We are now putting all kinds of mandates that are destroying this whole thing. Now this, I think is a, is a major uh, boondoggle, but it does not mean that they will not move into North America. That I believe that, again, I've always been a big fan of, of the Mexican economy and their ability to host these things without all these crazy governmental bureaucracy. Anyway, a bunch of favorite sayings that, are, that I posted, lots of fun stuff. And then what is the special sauce that Origin Clear brings? Because there's incubators everywhere. What's so special about us? Well, we have developed a real strength working with everyday investors. We believe strongly in accredited investors and also crowdfunding investors. I think our investors today, those who have stuck with us, are very happy. Conventional opportunities to make money as an investor are few and far between for everyday investors. So where can we get pre-IPO opportunities, right? Ashton Kutcher was an early investor in Airbnb. He made 157,000% on his money. Excuse me. Bitcoin's rally is creating around 1,500 millionaire wallets daily. That's a lovely thing. But wait until the water market reaches peak momentum. That is going to be a phenomenon, in my opinion. All right. And I'm not dissing Bitcoin. I think it's wonderful. But again, I'm not an investment advisor. All right. A World Water Day is coming up on the 22nd of March. And our new motto, Save the Planet, Recycle Water. Why do we say that? It's because all this decent water decentralization and so forth, at the end of the process is the ability to reuse your water. Now, very, very few um, operators of water treatment systems are recycling water, including the decentralized ones, because it, water has not become a dire scarcity. You think it's scarce, just wait. But you cannot recycle water if you rely on the uh, centralized system. Why? Because it's not built that, to do it. Very, very hard. It costs billions that nobody's spending. So water on demand ultimately enables the recycling of water by industry and agriculture. And in honor of World Water Day coming up on March 22nd, we have some did you knows, which I will let you discover on your own. And the final thing that I just posted a few minutes ago is that this talk of a Fed pivot that supposedly the Fed might lower rates. Well, according to this, this is not a great time to do it. It could create another spike in inflation.
Well, I'm not a seer. I, I don't, I can't tell you what's going to go on, but I can tell you this, that you do not want to be in unstable markets. You want to be in stable markets. And that is my, the morale of the story, the moral of the story. I apologize. <laughs> not the morale of the story. Okay. And let's take a look. I've got a couple more people. Paul Fetcher, any comments on today's increase in OCLN value? We don't comment on the stock. Um, I can only say that fundamentally, this has nothing to do with what the stock might or might not do to be doing. But remember, the Origin Clear has a subsidiary called Water on Demand, which has filed for a merger with a blank check company. And that's really all I can say. And I will not make any further prognostications. Um, and you know that I can't. All right, let's jump right back in here. Ken Berenger was on site, as you know. Um, so here's what happened. Here he is. A meeting with Kevin that was from that, that clip that you saw. And and here they are together. Two good looking guys with hair. Two good looking guys with hair. Well, I'll tell you what, Ken is gonna have a chance to tell us all about it in a few minutes in the freewheeling discussion. So we'll leave it to him and where it's all going. Very exciting. We had a management meeting today about it, and I am really pumped up about it. Okay, so this repeats the the announcement we made on March 7th and um, that he Harrington will work with us to increase recycle, save the planet, recycle, uh, recycle water, right? Okay, let's jump right into a quick excerpt and then we're going to hear what Ken's got to say. And of course, AJ, our phenomenal VP of marketing. So here we go. Intention is everything, right? Imagination creates reality is a very good saying. So here we are, we imagine something and we make it real. There's no situation that you can't work your way out of. None, it doesn't exist. So I'm gonna take a step back for the, for the folks listening is that there's two cool things that Riggs mentioned that I just wanna define for you. One was diversification and one was vertical integration. So diversification, as, as Riggs mentioned, AT&T, right? How they kind of diversified their offerings. They went from cable internet to cell phones to internet to internet or satellite TV. That's just a diversification, right? Spreading out your kind of brand at different market segments. Now, Riggs also talked about vertical integration. So as Riggs was mentioning, you know, currently he's in the water industry focusing on, you know, businesses, but now they're vertically integrated into the RV sector. So what that means is they're still doing, talking about water, they're just doing now a different market segment in that water area. I, I really love to uh, pull those things out for the listeners because it's just really good to kind of hear it in practical sense. Now, now Riggs, I got to say, building a water brand, like, whoa, this is all new, right? So what, like, what does it take to disrupt a slow moving industry like the water brand? Well, you, you find the point, that, like change is inevitable. In 2016, I came across a research paper by Lux Research that said decentralization is a thing. I started to proselytize it. And people were like, what? What are you talking about? I was way too early, but you kind of have to be early, right? You have to put your marker on things so you're the decentralization guy. So by the time um, we started, we, we, we built a company from scratch in 2018, the one that does the pods, specifically for this, and they didn't become profitable in 20, until 2021, and now they're booming. So things kind of hockey sticked starting in 2021, 2022, where a whole lot of businesses, trailer parks, housing developments, power plants, you name it, everybody's, everybody wants to do their own water treatment. And then you have the problem of huge land booms. There's a big land boom going on north of Dallas, Texas, between Dallas and the Oklahoma border. It's going crazy. They're building housing developments like crazy, way ahead of sewage. And so they need those pods, boom. And that's what we've been doing. We've been dropping those pods in and it's a, it's a financial solution for the developer and also a time solution. It takes time to build five, 10, 15 miles of sewage plant, of sewage line, right? So um, getting, the, getting the fresh water is a challenge, but it's not as big a challenge as this, you know, cleaning the dirty water. Because for example, one of our sites is on the shores of Lake Denison, which is on the Oklahoma border, who wants to pollute Lake Denison, right? Yeah, yeah, very much, yeah. 
<laughs> who wants to pollute any lake, right? I mean, exactly. I, don't think, I think that's the goal. Now, let's talk about the process that you're now going through. Uh, so Origin Clear, you mentioned you had a very high valuation of over $35 million, and now you're going public. You're taking it on the stock exchange. Give the give the audience a little bit. What does that, one, what does it mean to go from a private company to a public company? And then how do you do it? Okay. Origin Clear has been public for 16 years. Okay. Perfect. That's the parent company. We, we, because the people we were working with had this, this, um, they, they raised money in the public space. So it's been a penny stock forever. Uh, you can, OCLN is the ticker. It's literally a penny. But what we did was we had, we, in November, 2022, we were presented with an opportunity to merge with what's called a blank check company, a special purpose acquisition company. And these things are just a pile of money looking for something to buy. That's all they are. But here's the thing. It was already on the NASDAQ. I don't want to get too technical, but cleaning up the cap table was a big deal. We had a lot of preferred shares, et cetera. So we then said, no, 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 we're not going to have our company be bought. We're going to have our creation, Water on Demand, which we'd already created. That's who we're going to put up to be bought. And so that is what we achieved the $32 million valuation for, independent of the valuation of Origin Clear, which is something like, I don't know, 10, 15 million. Water on demand does not trade. Yeah. But assuming that the SEC approves our merger and the NASDAQ approves our application, we will be trading on the NASDAQ. Water on demand will. And we already have the ticker. It's WODI. So we've been reserved a ticker by NASDAQ. That's a true pre-IPO. And so right now people are investing not in water on demand because it's going into quiet period, but they're investing in Origin Clear, which happens to own a huge stake in water on demand, and that's how it's happening. And they're getting these uh, water as a service royalties as well. Man, I'm going to go log on and go buy some Origin Clear real quick. Man, this is see, I really love this stories because I think what it really tells you for the for the listeners it. There's a lot of things that go in the background. You know, Riggs has been mentioned that he's doing it for 30, 40 years, you know, really working through different industries, working in different industries, getting experiences from different markets. And it's all culminating into this one big idea and really kind of pushing things forward. And the beauty I, I really like about it at the end of the day, yeah, sure, we're, we're you know, business centric, right? We're trying to create a revenue, but it's also helping communities. Right. Providing clear water. And then as, as Riggs mentioned, you know, outsourcing a lot of these jobs. OK, now you have now you actually have some individuals uh, creating more jobs in their local economy. Right. And, and that's that's the goal. How do we actually get individuals back into the work? How do we get in the local economy? How do we get them to think entrepreneurially? Because at the end of the day, this country was built on the back of entrepreneurs. Right. And so so the really goal is just to try to make sure that we exploit that and those educational opportunities for our listeners. Now, Riggs, what would you say, you know, looking back on on your experience, what would you say is something that you're glad you went through because it's helped you be successful today? Well, I'm, I'm glad that I wasted my time doing things that were not the career path, right? Like working for a time in film, uh, like going to the sea in ships and literally um, tramp steaming around South Pacific islands with loads of coconut. I mean, that, well, first of all, it, it teaches you how to handle um, tight situations, emergencies. Oh, the ship's going to sink. Well, today my ship's not sinking, but like all entrepreneurs, I have to look at, well, what is the viability of the company? I was listening to the all in, the all in, the all in, um, the all in summit, um, about a year ago. Um, and Elon Musk, you know, doing okay. Right. And so they said, so, um, I, are you, do you feel secure about your, about your cash position? He goes, no, it's just that my cash horizons further out. That's all. He still has a concern about running out of cash, and yet he's got billions. So what it tells you is you will always have that, and you have to learn to rise above it. I have people who get very like, oh, I don't know how we're going to make it. And so forth. And I, one of my jobs in the company is to go, okay, here's how we're going to handle it. We're going to do this, this, this. And they go, oh, okay, fine. Right? Um, because... Intention is everything, right? Imagination creates reality is a very good saying. So here we are, we imagine something, we make it real. 
There's no situation that you can't work your way out of. None. It doesn't exist. That's just how it is. That's what I've learned. Because in the 80s, that business that I built in the 80s, computerizing companies, I shut it down voluntarily because I didn't think the money was in it. And the guy I gave the business to, he made it, he became a millionaire. How? Because he found that the ongoing um, annuity from being an IT shop for companies is a multi-decade life cycle, right? And I was, you don't make money when you first computerize a company. It's terrible. It's horrible. But then you have the gravy of the monthly fees, right? And I didn't factor that in. I could have made it just fine. And it was just, I literally, I became discouraged. So when you become discouraged, you got to find out where, where the exit is. What, what, what's the better idea, right? It always is there. The better idea is always there. The problem we have with oil, with gold, with all assets is that they're being manipulated. I, I have gold. Why? It should be going up. Why, is it, why it's not, I have no idea. But water is not being manipulated yet because it's just coming out into the market and it's a steady up trend of demand, right? Water demand does not go up and down. It just keeps going up. So the, the, the point I'm making is it's a great asset investment. Um, we very, right now it's for accredited investors. Within, I would say a month, I'm hoping to have a crowdfunding offering for any investor with a very low minimum. Join the, join the fun, um, you know, and potential upside. So uh, obviously, like all equity investments, you know, nothing's guaranteed. But, you know, we are very, very, very excited about what we're doing in the water industry. And we, we paid the dues for being early. Um, but it also means that we're there and we're in the right position. And we invite your listeners to go take a look. Yes, I would I would gladly invite the listeners to also take a look. In fact, this information will also be on the newsletter to the Shades of Entrepreneurship, the newsletter that comes out every Wednesday. Uh, so I would highly recommend. Now, I am not, folks, I'm not a financial advisor, uh, but I, I always love looking at investment in stocks and kind of, you know, doing some things. Um, and, you know, I think one newsletter that I might write coming up is kind of talk about the difference between like a 401k and an IRA and making sure everybody knows the difference and maximizing those benefits as well, because investing is so important when you're thinking about creating generational wealth, right? And that's yeah. that's truly the emphasis of this uh, podcast is to really help the individuals that are listening, one, to succeed in their entrepreneurial endeavor, and two, to really help establish generational wealth for yourself and your family, right? We, we truly want to keep building. Now, now, Riggs, is there any last words you'd like to say before we, we leave today? Well, I've been thinking a lot about the concept called break to build. Now this came from um, uh, Air Jordan commercial from a long time ago, 10, 15 years ago, but they used it once, break to build. And I, I like that. And so you've got to be willing to break your model to build, right? There's a wonderful book called The Innovator's Dilemma by Clayton Christensen, where he talks about companies that were unable to break, they, they had a, like this drive industry, I'm selling plenty of 28 inch disc drives. What's my problem? Your problem, dude, is that you, there's 14 inch disc drives coming along. It's gonna destroy your business. And company after company after company was destroyed by this constant cascade of new uh, stuff. And so you've got to be willing to break your model to build a new. Uh, I, I'm fascinated by that. And I think, but you gotta break to build with a team. That's the second thing I really wanna emphasize. I analyzed, um, had a big epiphany uh, late last year where I realized that I'd been, a, I'd been a, a hero on my life. But you go, whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, no. It doesn't scale. Being a, being a Superman doesn't scale. You can't be Superman everywhere. It's impossible. You can be League of Avengers, right? Be a team. And so that's where I realized it's like everything is a team. Without a team, you will not scale your business. So that's the number one thing. If you're going to break to build, fine, but do it with a team. Man, I love it. I love it. You know, it's 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 interesting you say that because I I think that's where I'm kind of working on right now is is how do I build with a team? How do I 
how do I create my team? Who's the right person for the team? You know, so some of the things we're thinking about is like, sure. who's, who's the finance guy? Who's the marketing guy? Who's the business guy, right? Who's, who's there's, there's different pieces and all of them are extremely valuable uh, to build a team. Uh, Riggs, thank you so much for your time. This has been a uh, very informative. I, I truly, I, I think one, you know, again, being able to explain the difference between diversification and vertical integration, talking about the importance of water filtration and why it's needed, uh, talking about possible, uh, you know, you know, investing opportunities that are going to be arising here in the future, which is super, super cool. And then, again, you you know, encouraging folks to continue to grow, uh, break it, you know, build it to break it, I think is, is a phenomenal uh, concept. Uh, in fact, a great, great story for that one is, is Hall, a blockbuster video, right? Where uh, they, they couldn't innovate. They didn't pivot. In fact, they even had an opportunity to purchase Netflix. I know mind. what a story that meant. I mean, that is just amazing, right? Uh, Reed Hastings went to them. Yeah, yeah. And no, they Netflix, laughed him out of the room. Netflix went to Blockbuster and said, hey, we have this phenomenal product. And Blockbuster is like, no, we got it good. Because again, like Riggs mentioned, it's sometimes it's, we're already good in this space. There's nothing going to just, we haven't changed since, you know, 1972 when the VHSs came out, right? Well, guess what? Those change. And now look at the DVD on demand. It's gone, right? It's now all streaming, right? And so, so it's- true. It's, 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 and you, it's kind of funny how quickly things innovate. I remember when mini discs came out as well, went from like tape recorders to CDs to these mini discs that only lasted like two years because as soon as the mini discs, all of a sudden streaming services came out. So it's like everything has an end goal. And so I really love that concept, you know, build it to break it because break to build you, or break to build because you, you truly have to, I'm not saying you have to always be looking forward and looking like the the, the world's fallen and everything's going to crash down. No, but constantly thinking of innovation, right? Thinking of ways, different ways to innovate. How do you continue to create value for your, for your organization and also for the consumer at large? Uh, Riggs, thank you again so much for your time. I appreciate it and have a great night. Well, that was a fun interview and it was nice listening to it again. Speaking of Paul Fetcher, he was around when I had that experience with that computer company and he knows exactly what was going on at the time. Well, you know, learning experiences don't come cheap. All right. We have the free willing discussion, and we're going to hear more about what happened this week with Kevin Harrington. All right. So I, 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 was, I, I, teased, I teased a lot because, Ken, I really wanted to get you to get a chance to talk about, set up what happened, you know, what it was, what it wasn't, and what is planned. Just uh, go ahead and lay it out. So, well, I came in the night before. I, I thought it was a good idea to, you know, you want to observe people in their natural environment, right? You know what I mean? So I came out to dinner and and Kevin was wonderful and very gracious. And he he had, had he had an event where he was he was working with entrepreneurs on on how to get them branded and stuff like that. Not our necessary it wasn't it, kind of the way we integrated with Kevin, but this was more of his kind of his not natural environment, how he brings in entrepreneurs and helps them, you know, brand and expand. And and it was fun to watch him do his thing. And I met a couple of really terrific entrepreneurs with, you know, just, just that great attitude. And, you know, and of course they pitched me, you know, on, you know, doggy duvets and 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 in and, and, and I just, you know, okay, you know, just listening and getting picked. I got pitched a lot, you know, I got because they so what do you do? And I when I told him I did and how we were partnering with Kevin and how he was on the advisory board, they thought they could get to Kevin through me. Now, now I hadn't actually met Kevin personally until about a few minutes before. So I was like, yeah, I'm not the guy, right? But I I, I let them pitch me and that was a lot of fun and 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 thank you for dinner, guys. Met afterwards. Went to the cigar bar, found cigars I like. Okay, so we got to spend some time there. Shared, so I shared some. You know, they they kind of said, well, you know, when they found out my background, where I was from, they're like, all right, you got to give me some stories. So I gave them one or two stories, for, you know, free ones. Okay, the rest cost you. I told them, and then and then we got he got to the shoot the following morning. So he has he's got this great you know assembly line system of bringing in entrepreneurs and and creating virality for them and it was that was fun to watch his system uh, i picked up a couple of ideas on how it could be applied uh, towards things that kind of operate in our periphery not our core thing but things that we do peripherally and i can discuss with aj and you guys uh, separately it was a great it was a great chat with kevin you know he's you know i know it's his job to say like i'm really excited about it, but it, it, like he really is you know what I mean? Um, because, you know, it, you could, 
when, when, when somebody, when somebody is in the business of being a, a, a promotional kind of guy, you know, when the camera shuts off that, you know, the smile changes, they get distracted, they read their phone. He kept smiling and he kept talking about it. Right. And that was, uh, that was a clear indicator to me that, you know, he, he's as excited about the, the, uh, the fellowship as we are. And it was a lot of fun to do. We got a little taste of it. You know, it was just a, a few moments on camera. So what you were seeing audience was Brian, his son, Tony Green, Brandon, they were doing like iPhone, you know, little iPhone shots. That wasn't the, that wasn't the interview. Um, uh, they sent me a couple of outtakes where, which were, which were fun too. You know, it was really good. And, you know, Kevin gets it, right? He, he specifically understands the implications of what we're doing, you know, the, the, the need for, you know, if you're going to disrupt one of the largest industries in the world, you're probably going to need more than a handful of people. You know, one of the things I said to him is, and AJ and I discussed this, I said, you know, I think over the last few years, we've demonstrated, you know, coming from a near extinction event, you know, a decade ago with it, with the, you know, with the destruction of, 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 you know, fracking and how it destroyed biofuels. And I said, through sheer stubbornness and could just the unwillingness to die, Origin Clear managed to power through what really breaks a lot of companies. You know, it, it feeds into what you mentioned. I, by the way, that guy, I, I, I don't remember his name. The guy, he's very smart. I actually like to hear him. Very bright guy. Uh, but you basically said intention is everything. You simply see where you will be and then you make that. I mean, in the early days, Riggs, that's all we had. We had, nope, not going to go down. Nope, I'm not going to fall, right? And But we, 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 we use that to create a reality around us simply through the sheer force of will, right? And then you find, as you've, and you've described this, you find like-minded people. Like at first, that was me. And then, then it was just you, just you and me. First, it was just you. Then it was just you and me. And then we brought in, you know, then, 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 then you had, you know, Dan. Well, it was, it was and, Dan and then, yeah, and then, and then AJ. And so you build an army of us, right? But an army of us, it's, it's really just not an army. It's a platoon. It's not even a platoon, it's a squad, right? So I, I, I had said to him that I think we demonstrated really, really clearly that, you know, a half a dozen of highly motivated, creative, relentless people can literally bend the curve and, and make something happen. But to, to now take this to a state where it can, it can change the world, and that's not really a figure of speech. I think that what we're doing is absolutely will change the world for the good, but you need an army of us, an army of everyone. And I said, you, my friend, are the general to that army. And Kevin has that ability to kind of marshal, you know, a, a broad swath of, of the public and reach an audience that we're not always talking to. You know, you tend to talk to guys like you. It's a bias and, and not a bias in a negative way, but you gravitate towards people that are entrepreneurs that think like you, that, you know, that, you know, that they, they laid awake at night wondering how the hell am I going to do this? This is the, this is the fellowship I have with a lot of our investors. You know, I am one of our investors, right? I'm 50, I'm 56. Uh, I've donated a lot of money to great ideas that never happened, that sort of thing. So I can speak to that guy. I never actively invested prior to being an accredited investor. You know, I was, I was, I was an entre entrepreneur saving every nickel, right? You know, I, I didn't do that. So I, I think Kevin's superpower is, first of all, his demonstrated ability to take companies like Celsius from 50 cents to like $50 or 80 cents to 50, something absolutely, you know, monumental. But it's also the strength and the power of his branding experience, his, his branding intuition, He's got an, you know, he's got an intuition. And I think that drives, that drives and informs a lot of what we do. We operate very intuitively sometimes, you know, sometimes, and, and, and more times than not, our, intu our intuition proves to be incorrect, but we also can, can move very, very nimbly when it's wrong. We, we recognize early on, she's taken on water, Captain, you know, and it's like, okay, you know, throw the buckets out. That's not going to work, right? The lithium crystal, she cannot yeah, make she's it. She's got to blow, Captain. I can't get you for what I ate. Right, yeah. So it's it's that, you know, it's that, it's that thing. It's his, his instincts and his intuitions on how to further brand us. We've branded us to, to great effect. And we, and we have a very powerful audience that we know how to speak to 
very effectively. I believe that Kevin's superpower, among the things that I've already met or already mentioned, not just his past experience, his past success, his name recognition, he, him be, look, and I even said to him, I said, you know, you've picked a couple of winners in your life. And he smiled and I said, so the fact that you decided to partner with us and not just be a, you know, kind of a loosely affiliated party, right? But you literally are joining the advisory board speaks a lot about the opportunity that you see. He goes, absolutely, you know, 100%. He goes, you know, you put your money where your mouth is, so to speak. So, and so on top of on top of the 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 positives that I've mentioned, his experience, his name recognition, his his ability to have tremendous success in this in bring in shining a light on companies that have like Celsius that have tremendous success. Uh, the fact that he is picky, the fact that he doesn't, the fact that he says no a hell of a lot more than he says yes, are all telltale signs that we're in the right place with the right guy. But it's also He's got intuition and he he has a, a, a great connection to an audience that we are only yet starting to establish, which is kind of your, you know, everyday regular guy who doesn't get access to deals. He really doesn't. You know, and I said with Kevin the other day when I was speaking with him and 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 as I was kind of creating, you know, how I viewed this thing, I said, you know, you're on Shark Tank all these years. And how many times when you went and bought 49% of a company did your audience wish like hell they could like put in $100 next to you or $1,000 next to that investment? Because chances are you picked a winner. Never before have investors had an opportunity to, to swim with the shark. By you, by you being the, you know, essentially the tip of the spear on our crowdfunding, the regular public, ordinary public are going to actually have a long have an opportunity to invest alongside the shark. And, you know, that's, re yeah. So, you know, so that's it. That's, that's my story. That's all I'm telling. I, I love it. And I just want to emphasize that this was not a main event. Really what we did was we took opportunity, we took an opportunity to, to grab a drive-by basically. It was, yeah, it was, and it was a, literally that. Yeah. Yeah. And, but we wanted that. I had a feeling that you and Kevin, and you, you guys really hadn't talked before, would connect, besides being New Yorkers, it is what it is, but that you- Saying guys, it wrong. Exactly. New right? Yorker. Yeah, well, you know, I, I'm not going to pretend to imitate a New Yorker. Okay. This no, but you can make it. fun of me and do it. That's in that, I mean, <laughs> why pass up an opportunity to make fun of my, my accent? No, but I'm, I'm very bad at, at, at the, you know, I, oh, I lived okay. in New York long enough to know that I'm not a New Yorker. But anyway, so, but just, I, I felt that, that first of all, it's very, very important. And this is where AJ comes in. We have to focus Kevin's efforts 100% on enlisting broad uh, groups of crowdfunding investors. We mm. want the crowdfunding of water, save the planet, recycle water, to be synonymous with Kevin so that he then is, you, you can't have three focuses, right? You have you only have one focus. And so we want to take the Kevin Harrington asset and put it to work for the crowdfunding and make it huge, huge. And uh, huge. Paul, Paul Fetcher is saying New York, New York. It, yeah, no, it's New York and it's Long Island. And don't even ask me to spell that. Yeah. I don't know. It's got like G's and H's and I don't I know. know. It's like, what's up with that? Anyway, so AJ, tell us quickly where we, where we stand in terms of the planning of the relationship, the rollout, et cetera. Yeah. So I had a meeting today with kind of the internal marketing specialist within Kevin's team, uh, in, in addition to Brian and Brandon, who uh, kind of got a chance to meet down in Florida. And it was really good. Uh, we were obviously going to take steps to prioritize various assets for the Reg A. We're also looking into uh, looking to systems to help optimize kind of our outreach in conjunction with what they're also doing. So it's it's going to kick off fast. You know, they have a lot of really exciting ideas for ways to be able to inject Kevin into messaging and mm -hmm. to help bring visibility to these pieces, which completely align with what we're doing. And, you know, again, I, I Ken and I kind of laugh a little bit because we were going through, you know, what do we want to say? How do we want to help people understand? And I'm the kind of guy that's like, get get back to save the planet, get back to save the planet. You know, I, I have to, like Ken is so excited about the investor side opportunity and in, in letting people understand just how big of an opportunity it is that, you know, like you said, Riggs, we kind of have to, 
going to have to remind people of the message. Like, yes, it's a fantastic opportunity. We're also saving the planet. You know, I'm the guy that got to go and do a whole bunch of research on all the problems in the water industry. Right. And, yeah. And it, they were eye opening. Right. It's like, yeah. I mean, listen, we've I, I've scratched the surface long enough because I've been listening to enough CEO briefings to hear, hear Riggs talk ad nauseum about all the myriad of problems around the world. Right. And all the especially especially in the United States, all the different problems. And I touched on some of that last week. But being able to to get people to be able to align behind something so impactful in in their lives and in the future of their their kids in in it's it's a very powerful thing that we're doing and so having someone like kevin be able to to bring his his visibility and his network and his ability to broadcast messages and get people on board has a massive impact for for everyone involved you know obviously from an investor perspective it's amazing but Truly from, and again, it's not an alarmism, but truly from a sense of urgency and moving with purpose, all of the capital that we're going to raise as part of these, as part of these, these offerings are going to ex- greatly accelerate our ability to make an impact in this space. And, right. and that, that can't be understated, guys. I mean, when we say population is outpacing water availability within the next 25 years, you're like, well, that's 25 years from now. Yeah, That'll that's that's tomorrow, right? And, right? And, 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 and when you're going to conquer a worldwide problem, you need a running start. Like we need a really long runway. And it's, you know, you can't be like, I'll get to it. The 25 years we'll have to work at this will just catch us up to parity, right? Yeah. Not only that, it, 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 you don't just 25 years from now, all of a sudden there's no water. No, it's just a right. boiling... Slowly boiling problem, right? Right. It gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And and what was interesting about this idea of the uh, adoption tornado is that I think that that's really valid here is that we are positioned to to lead, but we need to bring tremendous assets to bear to get velocity, right? To just blah 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 blah, and crank it up. And that's AJ where your job comes in, which is scaling up. Yep. And 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 it comes the silly question. How soon do you want to start saving the planet? You you want to put it off till tomorrow? Right. That sort of thing, right? Well, I mean, it's again, we we talk we can we talk about this all the time, but it's in, internally, right? So it's fun when we get to actually share with everyone, you know, that comes yeah. to see your briefings every week that, that there's the barrier to entry is so low with crowdfunding. It's so low that everyone can get a piece, right? Everyone can contribute right. to the cause right. and feel good about it. Right. You can you can watch the the potential of the impact that your money's making and also be able to be satisfied with it as an investment because the offering is extremely generous. All the offerings we have are extremely generous. So you, I there's there is no no disputing that. In fact, Ken Ken was talking with with one of our investors, I think about a month ago. It was like, you I look at all these offerings all the time. Like, this is really, this is really generous. And Ken's like, I know. Right. Like Yes, yes, it is. Yeah, but it's not it's not gonna be that way forever. But no. it, it's certainly getting that velocity it is in your best benefit as well as ours. We're trying to do everything we can to to start getting this thing rolling, you know. Well, I'm extremely pleased that AJ, you are you are working on that while Ken essentially uh, and Ken owns the continuity yep. of fundraising and crowdfunding, right? The continuous focus, single-minded focus on this. And this is why it was so important that he mind-melded with with Kevin and his huge battle plan being put together. AJ and team, we have now a group chat going with the Kevin Harrington team. And Mm -hmm. when you mentioned Brian, we're talking about Brian Harrington, of course, Kevin's son. And Brandon is the marketing maven over there. And so they have a full team. And in fact, AJ, Brandon is your opposite number over there. He's got the same level of, of capabilities. So that's amazing and exciting. We're going to have to start wrapping it up, but Daryl Polson had a question. How do you see the water problem being combined with the energy problems? Well, the reason why they're very similar is that in both cases, the central grid was built long ago and is not up to speed. We've had problems all over the North, North America and the U.S. with the energy grid breaking down in Texas and California, et cetera. And now with electric car adoption, it's going to get worse. So, right. and and the energy grid doesn't handle it. So the energy grid is going through decentralization as well, constantly. That's what solar power is all about and so forth, right? So uh, the same movement that we're talking about in water has been happening in energy for longer. And 
and water is now catching up with a similar um, divestiture. It's really divesting the water assets into private hands. That's right. Not the potable water. We don't want to mess with that. That that should be kept under government trust. We're talking about cleaning the toxic water, which must right. be the responsibility of the people who make it toxic. Hello. Right. And, and massive and and massive scale pre treatment of water going back to the city eliminates a lot of the problems. Right. So they're not trying to cope with 50,000 different contaminants, right? They're dealing with the stuff that they were built to do. Both the both the power grid and, and our water system were built for one-way travel. Yeah. There was never supposed to be any, any return. So trying to add that capability to the centralized system simply won't work. The problem that everyone will encounter is if they continue to try to think big. Our elegance, our solution wasn't going, not going big, going small. And, and Daryl, the thing you got to recognize too is, as Riggs mentioned, these things go hand in hand, and it's not just about the the decentralization of them or the deconstruction of these monoliths into these more nimble moving parts. It also has to do with the fact that in order to ramp up production on the energy side, they're also going to need to ramp up production and consumption on the water side, Absolutely. which is going to create more problems if we don't have the the solution in place. Which again is why we're all here, is we can make this go hand in hand and tackle a lot of the reshoring and production increases and, and increase recycling and make that a non issue and be able to see both of these continued efforts go hand in hand to great effect. But, yes. you know, again, it, it, has to, it has to start with covering our fundamentals. To Daryl, to Daryl's comment about micro communities, this is micro utilities. So, yeah, absolutely. Love it. Well, thank you, everyone. And I, you know, uh, I think we're already in the uh, remember when mode, but we have lots more remember whens to come. Do share your thoughts in the Zoom survey. AJ literally pours over the results. It's very, very important for our marketing. So please do spend a moment. And Ron, uh, thank you for your connection. And Ron Williams, let's let's talk offline about that because if you have that interesting connection. We should talk further. And St Stephen, Stephen Davis says, thank you. Let's get drenched. And with that highly appropriate pun, we're going to say good night all. And it's, as always, been a pleasure. We'll be continuing next week. Um, expect much more from the Kevington, Kevin Har Kevington, <laughs> the Kevin Harrington story, but much more. We have World Water Day, as I said, coming up. And that is in, what is it? Uh, literally the day Love after the next week's briefing, yeah. right? It's the 22nd, which is Friday. So lots coming. Stay tuned. See you next week. Thank you very much, all. And great week. Yeah. See you, everybody.